Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Teton County in Wyoming, we rented cabins just a small way from the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The mountains with snow were around the lake. A big lodge was just up the road with moose eating grass in the water behind the lodge. The sighting was a short way from the cabin heading towards the Grand Canyon. It is the only field with tall green grass and water running in it before the canyon. My wife and two sons were with me. We left one morning just after dawn to visit the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and see the sight. A short ways up the road, I looked to the right and there was a big open flat field with a body of water running through it about nine feet wide. Tall green grass about waist high was growing. It was a beautiful sight. About 60 yards out or so, I saw a tall, dark, hairy figure standing close to the water. It stood seven feet tall or so, with its back to us and its head turned to the left. Its features were massive and very powerful. It was no bear because it heard our van and saw us and took off walking like a man. Its stride was long with its arms swinging as it walked. My entire family all saw exactly the same thing. The light visibility was quite good. I told all family members to keep their eyes on this creature and to look at nothing else. We finally drove our car through some trees on the road and could no longer see the creature. There was no other traffic on the road. It was just a short time after dawn and we seemed to be out and about before anyone else. There were four witnesses. We were in our van headed for the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone to do a day of sightseeing. The lighting was good and the weather clear. It was an open, flat field, then dipping down into the east, running up to a line of timber. Also, a channel of water about nine feet wide, running through the field with waist-high green grass. The road bent uphill and west into timbers shortly after the sighting occurred. After returning to my hometown in Washington State, I spoke to a car salesman that used to pack horses in Yellowstone. He told me there have been lots of sightings in Yellowstone, but he had never seen one. On to the next one. This was in Park County in Wyoming. At the base of the mountain, the road crews had huge gravel piles that they were using in building this new road. I was looking up the mountain to see if I could spot bighorn sheep as we had seen grizzly and many other Yellowstone animals while driving around the loop of the park. I immediately noticed at, on one side of the mountain, nearest the top, a large triangular patch of snow and walking in large strides, a tall eight to nine foot hairy upright Bigfoot-like animal. It was so tall that you couldn't help but not see it. Then it made three strides across this rocky terrain and stopped just above a green grassy-like area next to the snow. My son saw the same sight as I because he was excited saying that it looked like and walked like Chewbacca, the Star Wars character. Even though it was so high above us, you could make out what it was. I'm only sorry that we couldn't stop and pull off, but the traffic was fast and nowhere to pull off because of the road crews. My son was looking up in the mountains because he couldn't find any bighorn sheep, and it was at the end of the day leaving Yellowstone Park. He had spotted and taken pictures of everything else. As we were driving out of the park, there was a lot of road construction involving the park road. The work crews were all along the area in which I saw it, high up on the side of the mountain. 
there was a large patch of snow that it was walking beside, and then it took several strides across the slope and stopped. As we were traveling in the car, we couldn't stop to pull off because of the road construction. I would like to know if there have been other sightings of this thing in the area of the park before. The flag girl on the road site was not aware of any sightings. I'm interested to find this out. Since my husband was driving, he was unable to see it, but my younger son saw the same sight as myself. On to the next one. This was in Park County in Wyoming. I was cutting firewood in a designated timber cut area with my brother, approximately halfway between Cody and Yellowstone. We were south of the highway, very near the north bank of the North Fork, an easterly flowing tributary of Buffalo Bill Reservoir. The timber in this area is not dense and afford good views of the high north-facing mountain slopes south of the river. Shortly before sundown, I noticed movement high up on a slope across the river. At first, I concluded that it must be bear or elk and pointed it out to my brother. My brother fetched the binoculars from the pickup to have a closer look, as we are hunters and the like and like to keep track of where we see elk. At first, he seemed startled in that he didn't recognize what he was looking at. Rather than jump to a conclusion, he handed me the glasses and asked me to look. By the time I got the glasses up, the animal had disappeared into the tree line and I couldn't see it. Shortly after, I noticed it again lower down on the slope in a clearing, moving all the while. At this point, I would estimate the creature at a quarter mile from us, moving closer down slope toward the river. This time, I got a good look at it through the glasses. It was definitely upright, walking on two legs, though there was no way to say at this distance. The specimen appeared between six and ten feet in height. More striking, however, was its mass. The creature covered in dark hair, almost seemed fat, maybe obese. This was no bear. I saw it walk for a good 100 yards, and it never came down on all fours. There is something on the North Fork that I have never seen before. About half an hour after my last sighting, we were loading the truck. The chainsaw wasn't running, so we could hear reasonably well. The river makes some noise. Right before we left, at almost complete dark, I heard a high-pitched, eerie, squealing noise coming from a few hundred yards upriver. I've never heard anything like it. Though, it is about the right time of year to still hear elk bugle. This was no elk. The sighting was between 4 and 5 p.m. It was on a high north-facing slope of the Abstorka Mountains, just north of the North Fork of the Shoshone River, halfway between Cody and Yellowstone. On to the next one. This was in Crook County in Wyoming. It was the second day of deer season, and I was going to try my luck in the Black Hills. It's the last chance to hunt in this part of Wyoming for deer. There was a good snow a few days before. I had an old Ford van, and I put a shanty heater in it through the roof vent. I drove down Grand Canyon Road to Williams Gulch. I had to shovel out an area to park the van. I didn't go up the Williams Road because the van was only two-wheel drive and I didn't want to get stuck in the snow. I parked where Grand Canyon and Williams Gulch Road meet. I got firewood that day and hunted up the ridges. I had my dog with me and got ready to spend the night. I ate something and sat in the van enjoying the wood heat. The wood stove was doing its job all too well and I had to open a side window on the van. Soon after, I heard a strange screaming noise outside. I still had my boots on, so I went out the back doors of the van to hear it again. I grew up in Upper Michigan and have been in the woods all my life, camping, hunting, and the like. This was something I have never heard before. It sounded like a whoa 
that lasted for about 20 seconds. If you hear something that long, it sounds like it lasts forever. It seemed to be some ways away, and when it stopped, you could hear echo off the ridges. What had me frightened was the volume of it. Whatever made it had one heck of a lung capacity. Afterward, my dog would not come out of the van. It screamed about four or five times. That night, I just laid there on the cot, wondering what in the world it was. The next day, I didn't see one deer, and that in itself is strange for the Black Hills. I don't know what I heard, and I'm the type of person that only believes what I see. There is nothing in North America that I know of that makes a sound like that. To me, it's an unexplained scream, but it's been bugging me for years. There was a noticeable lack of game. It was just after dark, 6 to 7 p.m. Years later, my brother heard screams where the Grand Canyon Road meets the Sand Creek Bridge. On to the next one. A group of Washington County youth in Kentucky got the surprise of their lives on October 17, 2008. Ben, his brother, and two of their friends had set up another friend that evening to take him snipe hunting, an age-old Kentucky tradition designed to take full advantage of one's gullibility. They found no snipes, of course, but they did find something else, something much more frightening. 2 a.m. found the group of four on a wooden hillside in Springfield, Kentucky. After setting up my friend halfway down the hill, Ben State, myself and two friends were circling around to drive the snipe to him. My brother stayed behind at the top of the hill to watch the event unfold. Things went from humorous to serious, however, when the trio stopped at the edge of the woods and were pelted by rocks and sticks being thrown at them by an unseen assailant. They automatically assumed it was Ben's brother, as they didn't know exactly where he was positioned, but they were wrong. Scanning the woods all around them, Ben spied a bipedal human-like figure as it walked between the trees. I thought my brother was behind us, following us up the hill, Ben said, but once we entered into the open field, we realized that he was still at the top of the hill watching us. While they stood at the top of the hill, waiting for the other friend who was holding the bag to catch the snipes and to catch up, they continued to be pelted by rocks and branches. While watching my friend walk up the hill to our left, we looked down into the wood where me and my friend came out. Near a forked tree, we saw something crouch down next to its base. They watched the figure for a couple of minutes, debating who or what it could be. And then the group went back to Ben's house. There was no possible way there was another human being in the woods with us that night, he said. Ben described the figure they all saw as bipedal, human-like, with broad shoulders. Even though it was crouched down, he claimed it was still very tall. On to the next one. Bigfoot witness Nancy claims that she watched a Bigfoot about 20 minutes one afternoon back in the summer of 1997 in Rockhold, Kentucky, near Williamsburg. It was summer. I was 16 years old. My younger brothers and I wanted to go camping, but we didn't have a tent. At their mother's suggestion, they set out to find some small trees to cut down in order to build a fort on a huge rock in a field above their house. We went out to find some small timber to cut down, Nancy said. My brothers found some before we reached the top of the mountain and began to cut them down. They sent me on ahead to scout for more up above the field around the cliff's edge. Nancy had been in that field numerous times and knew just where a stand of suitably sized trees was located. She reached her destination under the cliffside and took a good look around at the trees. She decided to start chopping down the nearest one at the edge of the thick woods and put the small hatchet she carried to work. The sound of metal striking wood 
echoed along the mountainside. She was only about halfway through the tree when the heat began to get the better of her, and she sat down beneath it to enjoy its shade for perhaps the last time. She had only sat there for about five minutes when she heard a peculiar banging noise above her on the cliff side. At first, I thought, well, that's the echo of the hatchet where I was hitting the tree a while ago. But the noise kept on, and I began to get curious. She got up and turned her gaze upward, backing away from the cliff to get a better look. She would see nothing, however, and soon gave up and walked back to the tree she was working on. Suddenly, she heard rocks sliding down the cliff. She turned and looked up again, and then I saw it. At first I thought, what in the world is that? Then, when I realized that what I was seeing didn't match up to any animal I knew of, and I began to get scared. There, standing about 15 feet above me on the cliff, was this man-like thing with shoulders about four feet wide and long, shaggy, reddish-brown hair all over its body. It was huge. I had never seen anything like it. Her first impulse was to run away screaming, but her mother had always warned her that wild animals would instinctively chase people if they ran. She began to back away calmly. Her mother had also told her that if she were to ever run into a wild animal, to pick two rocks up and strike them together to scare it off. She picked up two rocks and started beating the crap out of them, she said. So I picked up two rocks and started beating the crap out of them. It wasn't working. To her surprise, the figure bent and picked up two rocks as well and began imitating her action. She quickly decided to give up on trying to intimidate the creature and continued her calm, slow retreat toward the hill above the house, keeping her eyes glued to the creature on the cliff. Afraid that at any moment it might spring from the cliffside and come after her. Imagine her horror when the hairy beast began to follow her. When it reached a spot on the cliff where it could climb down, she broke into a terrified run toward the bottom of the hill and her brothers. I met up with my two brothers, screaming and crying, she says. I have never seen anything like that before, but I've watched TV, read and listened to other people's stories of similar encounters, and the only thing remotely resembling what I saw that day is what people call a Bigfoot. Nancy further described the thing as standing eight feet tall, four feet wide at the shoulders, with dark brown skin beneath six to eight inches of shaggy reddish brown hair. According to her, it was muscular, with hands that were over ten inches long. It had an almost human face with primate features. She further commented that it was almost like it was mocking me or trying to communicate with me, like it wanted me to know it was there or was trying to get my attention. Another Whitley County incident, this one ending in gunfire, also took place near Williamsburg on March 22, 2008. Me and my sisters were hunting, says Josh, and we heard a loud noise. The two turned toward the sound later described as sounding like a horrible screechy roar and saw a huge hair-covered man-like creature standing in the woods not far away. Frightened, the two did what most Kentuckians would do in the situation. They fired on this thing. Instead of frightening the beast off, however, the shots had the opposite effect. Seemingly unhurt, the creature roared again and charged the two hunters, who quite understandably turned and ran. They were relieved when the thing jumped into some tall weeds and disappeared, but not enough to quit running. They made it back to their vehicles and immediately left the area. One of them later described the figure as eight feet tall, covered with dark colored hair with huge hands. A similar creature was seen the previous year by a fisherman who was surprised when a tall, hairy, man-like monster emerged from the woods and started drinking from the stream. The fisherman then quietly left the area. 
I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!